thank you so much for having me here today. I'm, I'm very excited to be at this meeting and to talk about the work that we are doing at Stanford in partnership with CIRM. Um, the title of my grant is called New Bright, a purified allogenic cell therapy product for the treatment of dry age-related macular degeneration. And I'd like to start by telling you a bit about myself. I practice retina and retina diseases at Stanford University Medical Center. And here you can see the clinic building called the Byers Eye Institute at Stanford, where we see patients every day. And you can see me here in the clinic uh, with my N95 mask on, given the pandemic state these days. Uh, I see about 100 patients a week in the clinic. I also perform surgery in the operating room, treating uh, retinal diseases like retinal detachments and bleeding due to conditions such as diabetes. And through this experience, I see people every day, I see Californians every day that have debilitating and blinding diseases of the macula, such as macular degeneration. And this is the motivation for why I embarked on this research project. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little story about uh, what I do, and that's translational research. And what that means to me is taking knowledge and technology, uh, which um, has been discovered by brilliant scientists, such as my partner here, Irv Weissman, you can see in the photo, and bring that technology to a state that can be used in, in people to help cure blindness. And the disease that we're focusing on today is called age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. Um, and AMD is the leading cause of blindness in the United States, especially in our elderly population. There are two forms which you may have heard of. There is a wet or exudative form, um, which affects about 15% of these patients. And in the photo you see below there, you see red things in the back of the eye, which is bleeding under the retina, which causes rapid vision loss. There is also a dry or non-exudative form of this disease, which affects the majority of people, about 85%. And in this state, uh, disease, there is an advanced form called geographic atrophy, or GA. On the fundus photo on the right here, you can see a whitish area highlighted by these green arrows, which is the GA in the center of the macula, which is the center of your vision that you use to read with. And when you get this GA, you can no longer see in that area. It's kind of like having a big dead pixel in the center of your screen. Now, GA affects about 5 million patients in the United States, which equates to about 620,000 Californians that are suffering from this disease right now. Now, the good part about AMD is that the wet form that I mentioned first, where you have abnormal bleeding, has a very effective treatment. You might have heard of these eye injections, which go into the eye, provide medication to the back, stop the bleeding. And in fact, um, in clinical trials, you can see here the red and the orange lines up top show vision after the treatment with these medications. The vision goes up, it improves, and it maintains that improvement over many years. This is showing two years worth of data using these drugs, whereas the green line below is the non-treatment arm showing loss of vision that's maintained over two years. So that's good news for the patients with wet AMD. What about the patients with GA or dry AMD? Well, unfortunately, there is no effective treatment for this form of macular degeneration, and that's why we've imparted on this research. So to give you a pictorial view of what's happening here, if you look at the bottom, on the left-hand panel, you see a normal eye, a normal photo, and a normal cross-sectional cartoon there with photoreceptors and light-sensing cells of the eye, as well as some RPE or pigmented cells in the back of the eye. Well, in GA, on the right-hand panel there, you see that the RPE are starting to die. And because they are starting to die, the photoreceptors, the light-sensing cells of the eye, subsequently die as well. And this leads to vision loss. So as the area of geographic atrophy grows, we end up with vision loss. You can see here in a photographic progression over time in these black and white photos, the areas of GA here highlighted by the red arrows. Over time, that area of GA will grow. And as that patch of GA grows, we lose the ability to see in those areas. So enter the neural stem cell. This is derived from human tissue. They are multipotent, meaning they can become different cellular types of the central nervous system, but nothing else. And they will be used in this translational medicine approach here to restore and support the function of the eye. So 
our goal here in very broad terms is to take these stem cells, put them under the retina, and then allow those cells to restore the function of the photoreceptors and allow patients to see better again. That is our long-term goal. So let's talk a little bit more about these cells. So there are many mechanisms by which stem cells in this setting could help people. There's something called neurogenesis, where the cells themselves will become replacement cells like neurons and supporting cells like oligodendrocytes. These neural stem cells can also um, help with regeneration of lost cells and the connections between them. And lastly, neural stem cells can also perform a neuroprotection role, meaning they preserve the disease cells by secreting neurotrophic factors, which you can think of as hormones and other chemicals that help to stimulate and support the growth and life of the existing cells, or maybe repair and bring back to health cells that are not doing so well. To date, we performed several animal studies, and I'll go through some of those now with you. The first is that these neural stem cells, which are highlighted here in the fluorescent green, um, migrate under the retina. So when we put them under the retina in these animals, they not only survive up to 120 days in this example, but they also spread out. And you can see why this might be important in disease such as geographic atrophy, where you have a spreading area of loss of cells. So if we could put cells in one small area, they can actually spread out and cover the entire area that's missing cells. On the top here, we have an animal model showing what happens when photoreceptors die. So you have in the um, red dashed lines here, these cells of the photoreceptors. And over time, in this animal model, the cells naturally die. You can see here by 240 days, all those cells are gone. All these gray cells here on the left side are gone. Well, below, we have a treated rat with our stem cells, which are here in the dark purple. And you can see that out to 240 days, the purple circular cells, which are the photoreceptors, and the supporting cells still continue to survive. So we see here an anatomic preservation of cells that normally would die in this animal model of renal disease, which is very exciting. Um, and we've shown that these cells can preserve the presence of the photoreceptors out to 240 days. And by then, these cells would have surely been gone in the control animals. So that is, was a very positive result. So this is some indication in our animal model that there is preservation of anatomy in this disease. Um, can anatomy lead to improved function? That's our second question that we want to ask. So in this experiment, which is called a luminance threshold, meaning the ability for the retina to sense light at different intensities, we put the cells under the eyes of these rats and then measured the sensitivity of the eyes. The green diamonds here, you can see, have the highest sensitivity when compared to the rats that did not have any cells um, in the blue squares on this thing. You can see here that in this experiment, the, the implantation of the neural stem cells um, not only improved the anatomical preservation of the photoreceptors, but it also allowed the animal to sense light more sensitively. Here is another measure of function. We have a rodent here on the right-hand panel in this video inside a little contraption where little lines are being shown to it as it, and we measure the rat's ability to see motion on this. So uh, again, we have the green diamonds on top of this graph here on the left, showing the ability of the rodent to maintain vision functionally um, over time out to 240 days. And then the control uh, eyes are in the um, blue triangles here that did not get the cells. And those rats predictably lost their ability to detect this motion uh, over time. So our cells, at least in this animal model here, have shown the ability to preserve um, sensitivity as well as the ability to sense motion in these animals, which is very exciting. Um, we were fortunate to embark on some clinical trials in humans a few years ago using these cells. Here I am in the operating room performing surgery on a person. In this red circle here is the needle, the silvery object here going under the retina 
and we were actually infusing a million neural stem cells under the retina. And um, once the cells are in the uh, correct place, you can see a little blister of fluid there under the retina. And I'll show you one last wide field shot here in this circle. You see the little bubble there, it looks like a blister, which is a, a little bubble of neural stem cells, which is under this patient's retina. And um, you know we followed these patients over uh, two years to see how they did. So how do we figure out if there's a positive effect from these cells? Well, we have to look at what is the natural history, meaning what happens normally to patients with geographic atrophy. And one, uh, we talked earlier about how the GA progresses over time. The area grows like a burning brush fire in the back of the eye, and the area expands over time. The interesting thing, which has been studied uh, in the multiple government-funded studies, is that the amount of area between the right eye and the left eye of the same patient is approximately the same. So you can see here a, 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 a diagonal line in this graph and a bunch of black dots, which plots the growth of the right eye versus the left eye. And you can see it follows this kind of middle curve very nicely. So when we take a look at the results from our clinical trial, we have a similar diagonal line here. And if the area of geographic atrophy grows faster in the eye that we put the cells in, you would see the dots above this diagonal line. But if the GA grows slower in the study eye, in the eye that got the cells, then you would see the dots below the diagonal line. And what we found in our initial pilot studies was that most of the eyes that got the cells had a slower growing rate of geographic atrophy than their fellow eye, meaning the other eye in the patient. And this was a very exciting outcome for us. Now, because this was a pilot phase one study, um, it was not powered or designed to detect an efficacious result. We were only looking for safety, but it was very encouraging for us to see um, this hint at potential efficacy of the cells in these patients. Uh, moreover, when we follow the patients out to a year in this, in this graph here, and their vision is uh, on the left here when they started and on the right when they ended a year later, we can see that most of the, if not all of these lines had improvement in the measurement of vision, which again was a very exciting result for us. And the study again was not powered or designed to measure improvement in vision or efficacy, but this is definitely an encouraging sign for these cells. So in conclusion, human neural stem cells definitely can survive after transplantation and they were well tolerated in uh, these initial studies. There is evidence that the visual function can be restored in animals and potentially in humans. And lastly, more work should be done with these cells. So that brings us to what we're doing now. And I'm so grateful and thankful for the funding from California Stem Cell Agency so that we can do the work that we're doing now. Um, I show you this beautiful photo earlier on the right top right here of the neurospheres of neural stem cells. And what this actually is, is a little ball of cells of these, of these 150 or so neural stem cells, which grow in culture in this, in this beautiful fashion. But from a practical standpoint, if we are actually wanting to use these cells in people and in, or in animals, it would be much better if these cells were grown in a single cell suspension. So not in these little balls of 150 cells, but individual cells. Um, that would make the surgery safer because we use a smaller needle to get in the back of the eye. It would make the surgery easier and faster. And it might also allow the cells to spread out better and be more efficacious under the retinal surface. So what we are currently doing right now is reformulating these cells as a single cell suspension. And that work is going really well. We were able to grow the cells as a single cell suspension with our new uh, techniques that we've developed in the laboratory. And um, we are in the process of testing these new formulation of the cells, the single cells in the animal models that I mentioned to you earlier. Uh, we are also optimizing and confirming the stem cell identity and differentiation. And the ultimate goal uh, for um, our current grant from CIRM is to end up with a meeting with the, with the regulatory agency, the FDA, to uh, get an IND filed so that we can begin to go into humans again into clinical trials. And 
uh, you know, our ultimate goal is to really reach out and be able to affect the lives of the 620,000 Californians out there that have this uh, slowly progressive and debilitating and blind disease of the eye and to really help with uh, people's everyday function and their ability to, to enjoy life and uh, spend the time with their loved ones. So I'd like to acknowledge um, this very broad and collaborative team that I've worked with uh, all, all these years. We have um, collaborators and colleagues on the Stanford campus. We have people up in Oregon. We have people down in Texas. We have um, collaborators down in Pasadena, California as well. So, you know, from all of us to you, thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you today and tell you a little bit about the things that we're doing at Stanford. And thank you again to CERM for your support. <music>